But wait, what's World of Warships? World of Warships is the naval action MMO. Dipping into the world of large-scale sea battles of the first half of the 20th century, epic battles range across the oceans of the world in order to claim victory among teams comprised of the greatest representatives from an era of multi-ton marine giants. In order to achieve victory in battle, players must enjoy a wide range of strategy and a variety of tactical decisions. Sudden ambushes, cunning flanking attacks, open confrontation, and head-on assaults. Captains must strive to find an ideal way to deliver a decisive blow at the enemy. Tactical diversity in World of Warships comes from the inclusion of many different classes of warships, including aircraft carriers capable of providing remote air support and striking targets at extreme range, colossal battleships that protect power across a vast swath of ocean, and light and heavy cruisers with the capability to respond quickly to changing battlefield conditions. Stealthy and agile destroyers can be highly effective in group attacks. So don't wait. Join World of Warships today for free and rule the oceans. A foggy morning on May 24th, 1941, in the Denmark Strait, two English warships, a new state-of-the-art battleship, Prince of Wales, and the most famous ship at the time, the pride of the Royal Navy, HMS Hood, were en route to cut off two German sea raiders heading for the North Atlantic. The heavy cruiser, Prince Eugen, and the massive battleship, Bismarck, the largest ship of its kind at the time, was 823 feet 6 inches long, 118 feet 1 inches at the beam, with a 30 foot 6 inch draft. Displacing over 50,000 metric tons, she had 8 15 inch SKC 34 main guns, 12 5.9 inch guns, 16 4.1 SKC 33 guns, 16 1.5 inch SKC 30 guns, and 12 flak 30 guns. Her armor was an impressive 12 inches hull armor with uh, 12 inch armor surrounding her magazines and boilers. She had three to four inch sloping interior armor decking with two inch armored plate on top of that. Her 12 Wagner superheated boilers produced 1,148,115 shaft horsepower to three geared turbines pushing triple screws. And this gave her a sustainable speed of 29 to 30 knots. And they were sustainable due to her size and width which made her a stable platform, whereas a battlecruiser like Hood was not quite as stable, but was like a needle slicing through water due to her skinny nature. The Bismarck, at her size, had almost a 9,000 nautical mile range at 19 knots. She was a capital ship meant to engage and destroy other capital ships, yet turned into a sea raider to fit the Kriegsmarine's new idea of starving England into submission by smashing all of her convoys. Now, Prince Eugen was a heavy cruiser and was never meant to go head to head with capital ships. Prince Eugen was more of a hit and run tactic ship or a shadower, perfect for commerce raiding. As the Bismarck and Prince Eugen head to the Denmark Strait, a Swedish force spotted them and reported them to their superior. Uh, Bismarck and Prince Eugen sailed north through the Denmark Strait between Iceland and Greenland, being shadowed by cruisers HMS Surfolk and Norfolk. The Hood and Prince of Wales sailed west from Scapa Flow to head off the German Sea Raider. The Mighty Hood was commissioned in 1920 and had been modified due to lessons learned at the Battle of Jutland, which saw the loss of three battle cruisers, HMS Indefatigable, HMS Invincible, and the HMS Queen Mary, all of them exploding in similar manners. And it was mainly due to poor gunnery etiquette, leaving open doors, uh, storing explosives in the wrong place, because the English wanted quantity over quality. They wanted fast gunnery. They wanted a lot of shells to be rained down on their enemy instead of a few shells that made their mark. The Hood was the grandest and last of the battle cruisers built and the only Admiral class ever built. She displaced over 46,000 tons 
was 860 feet long with a 104 inch beam and had 24 Yarrow boilers pushing four geared steam turbines at 144,000 shaft horsepower with a top speed of 32 knots that was probably more around 27 to 28 due to her width at the beam she wasn't quite as stable in rough seas. She had eight 15 inch guns, 12 5.5 inch guns, four four inch guns, six 2.1 inch, four torpedo tubes with six to 12 inches of armor belt, three inches of deck armor, and 11 to 15 inches of armor on her turrets. If you delve deeper into this and study this, it's a misconception that Hood was not armored. She had armor. She was not a battleship, but she did have armor, enough armor to sustain her. Prince of Wales, who accompanied Hood on this particular journey, was a brand new battleship, but was suffering many, many issues, especially in her new quad turrets. They were not acting right. She still had civilian contractors aboard her as they had underwent. At 534, Admiral Lancelot Holland realizes he had made a critical error when he gave up his position in crossing the T, so he decides to close the distance. Admiral Luchens, aboard Bismarck, still is debating on bugging out and trying to run from the British. He's not wanting to engage capital ships because that is not what Operation Ryan entails. He's supposed to be a commerce raider. At 537, the British spotted the Germans. Germans already knew they were somewhere out there. And the opening fire, the Hood mistakenly fired on Prince Oregon, who was leading in front of the Bismarck, thinking the lead ship was Bismarck. Also, Prince of Wales fire, fired on Prince Oregon, leaving, which gave the Bismarck an opportunity to, to fire salvos unmolested. Admiral Lugents finally decided to start firing on the two English battleships and told the captain to fire. The captain gave the order and Bismarck and Prince Oregon started opening up salvos. Hood and Prince of Wales upon leading into the Denmark Strait did not have the wind, which is not as prevalent now as it was back in the day, but still the Germans had the wind gauge and all Holland could do was close the gap. The Hood was doing its best to close the gap, but had allowed the Germans to cross the T. And at 5.54 a.m. during Hood's 20 degree turn to come parallel with the Germans, the Prince of Oregon and Bismarck fired off another salvo, which was dead on, dead on. And the Bismarck salvo, which was from about 16,000 yards, the salvo landed around the hood, and just a few seconds later, there was a sudden jet flame that shot straight up near the mainmast of the hood, and then a massive magazine explosion that blew the hood, hood apart. She sank in three minutes, with 1,418 men going down with her and only three surviving. But as the hood went down she wouldn't go quietly into that night for as her bow before it went under her 15 inch guns fired one more ominous salvo in defiance ted briggs robert tilburn and william john dundas survived hood sinking now prince of wales at the time was still having trouble with her quad mount turrets and had decided to beat a hasty retreat which was probably for the best much debate has been made about what actually sank the hood. I personally do not think it was plunging fire into the deck because the deck, it would have been a very special shot and I do not think it would have done it. Um, they were really too close for plunging fire to begin with. Now witnesses of the Prince of Wales noticed issues with B turret right before the explosion. He said B turret hesitated to get on target, then eventually got on target. Don't know if that had anything to do with it. They could have already known there was a problem and decided to fire one more salvo before they knew they were gonna blow up. Um, and I do not think her torpedo did it and I don't think she blew herself up. 
Um, and the flames on the deck were basically gone when this happened. My personal opinion, which is supported by fact, is a 15-inch shell from Bismarck fell 20 feet short, short at an angle just right where it penetrated below the armor belt at the torpedo blister, allowing it to penetrate to the magazine compartment. When the shell detonated, it ignited the cordite. This is what caused the, the jet stream out the mainmast and causing the explosion. A B turret was, was having issues at the time and was at the epicenter of the blast that blew the hood apart. Now, like I said, I believe the shell penetrated below waterline. Proof corroborating this is at the same battle, at around the same time, Prince of Wales suffered the exact same hit, went below her armor plate, underwater, at her torpedo belt, or blister belt, penetrated all the way to the magazine compartment inside, but luckily the shot was a dud and did not detonate. So the hood was very unlucky that hers did. And it makes sense to do that both ships were in line. Uh, they were right near each other and would have suffered the same range shots. And I do believe that's what claimed the hood. And the hood's loss was a devastating blow to a country that was already against the ropes, battling Germany. The Admiralty and Winston Churchill had to react. They could not take the slap in the face, so Churchill said, put every ship a sail, sink the Bismarck. And so it was that every ship that could sail went into the Atlantic looking for the Bismarck. And she was eventually found by some very swordfish biplanes, but that is another story altogether. The hood, the pride of the Royal Navy and the ship, many countries and people in these countries associated with the might of England suffered a tragic fate May 24th, 1941. And unfortunately, Bismarck will suffer a fate similar. The Mighty Hood, the pride of the Royal Navy, suffered a bad defeat against Bismarck, though she probably should not have been there with just Prince of Wales, a ship that's not even been tested. Well, this is the end of this one. Uh, you know what to do. Hit like below, thumbs up, subscribe, whatever. And this is Big Duke 6 until next time. Well, there we go, guys. Our first warship. Do me one extra favor. Can you let Big Duke know in the comments how much we appreciate him doing this? He does his own research, writes his own script, and more importantly, throws out his own opinions. Uh, just like he mentioned with uh, not thinking that the hood was sunk with plunging fire. So all that, I think, kind of screams for him to uh, know how appreciated he is by the people that watch this. So if you guys are enjoying these, uh, please let us know, of course, but let us know. Do you want us to do a take next? Do you want us to do, you know, a sub, um, another airplane? Um, let us know in the comments what you guys are really looking for, and uh, we'll try to make that happen. So thank you guys again for watching, and uh, like Duke said, until next time.